Soldiers of Fortune blasted its way onto your Super NES back in 1993. Developed by the Bitmap Brothers and published on the Super NES by Spectrum Holobyte, Soldiers of Fortune is probably better known by its original name, the Chaos Engine, when it was released on the Commodore Amiga. Once it started getting ported to the West, though, publishers decided to rename the game to the way more generic and less cool-sounding Soldiers of Fortune. And thanks to it sounding like the most generic game on Earth, along with almost zero marketing or even previews in gaming mags at the time, Soldiers of Fortune was immediately doomed to rot on video store shelves everywhere here in the US. It seems that's more of a Western sentiment though, since the game was actually really well received back across the pond when it was originally released, with it getting near universal praise anytime someone spoke of it, no matter what platform it was on. So was this just a case of us dumb US kids not giving a game a chance and missing out on an awesome experience? Or was this just mass Brit hysteria over a game developed in their own backyard? Well, grab your favorite mercenary contract and demand some random guy at the grocery store to sign it because we're about to see if these soldiers are still worth hiring. Start up Soldiers of Fortune and you're immediately treated to a super brief story about a Baron that somehow created the Chaos Engine, a super bad thing that's went and turned people into monsters and are now ravaging the rest of humanity, with the Soldiers of Fortune the only ones up to the task of taking this Chaos Engine thing down. And that's literally all the info that's given here, at least in the game. The manual actually has a much more fleshed out story that explains things a bit more, but we're just gonna go with what the game gives us here. Press start and you're tossed into one of the busier character select screens I've ever Ever seen. Someone at the Bitmap Brothers really hated Dead Space. Over on the right hand side of the screen are all the soldiers of fortune that you can choose from with your current selection on the top left, along with several stats for each character that we'll cover in a bit more detail later. Each character is fairly varied, with some favoring power over speed or health over a big gun, so it's up to you to experiment with each character to see which best suits your playstyle. The bottom left is where you'll find the weapon that each character will be carrying, along with their unique ability item. For instance, the gentleman here starts with a map, so that you can use, well, a map, while other characters have more useful stuff like grenades or health refills. Once you select your character, then you'll need to select another one, since this is one of those games that forces you to have an AI-controlled partner whether you like it or not. It even adds an AI stat bar so that you can see how attentive each AI-controlled character will be. Get someone with a low brain stat and they may not attack enemies or dodge bullets as well as a character with more brains, so choose wisely here. Of course, if you're cool enough to have friends, you can just go in co-op style and not have to worry about how dumb the AI is. Once you're done staring at stat bars and profile picks, go ahead and secure your soldiers by pressing exit and get ready to enter the wastelands. Once you're actually in the game, you may think that you're just playing a very simplistic top-down shooter, especially this first level here. It's all very basic looking, with your selected character moving around in any direction, shooting at monsters, and generally doing exactly what you'd think you'd be doing in this kind of game. The main goal of each stage is to make your way through the environments, kill whatever's in your way, and shoot these weird electric pylon things when you come across them. Activate enough of them and the exit opens up for you to move on to the next level. Like I said, easy peasy, right? Well, hold on to your horses there, kiddo. because Soldiers of Fortune starts playing the rest of its deck right after that first overly simple stage. Suddenly stages start to resemble large open-ended mazes, where you have to find keys and switches to open up hidden passages to make your way through. Levels are now also filled with a ton of traps that only make progressing even harder. Step on the wrong thing and suddenly the area is filled with enemies trying to eat your face. Though honestly, even if you do step on the correct thing, the area will probably still be filled with enemies trying to eat your face, but you'll at least get an item or power up if you live. Those pylons I I mentioned before can now even open up alternate exits that gives you an advantage if you manage to activate enough of them. But doing so will require a lot of exploring and backtracking, because literally anything you do at any point in the stage could make a previously blocked path open up somewhere in the level, along with freshly spawned enemies for you to wade through. There's no real bosses to speak of until the end of the game, so at least you've got that going for you. So really it's just a matter of finding your way through levels, collecting as much money as you can, and making it out alive. Speaking of all that money you're collecting, you're able to use it to boost your stats after every couple of stages, spending that hot cash on extra health, speed, skill, more special item points, and even permanently upping your gun's firepower is all here for you to screw around with. And if you think this is just window dressing, then you're not going to make it very far in Soldiers of Fortune. Spending money on the correct stats for yourself and your partner is imperative to making it through this game, since after level 3 or so, it gets very hard very fast. Obviously spending points in health and 
speed is important so that you can dodge faster and take more hits, but then you've also got the option of putting in enough points to your weapon so that you can get it up to spread shot status, which makes lining up and killing enemies so much easier. You've even got a choice of spending points on your AI character's brains if you manage to pick up one of the dumber characters and notice that they're not pulling their weight. And this all comes back around to what team you made in the first place, since the different combinations can make how you spend your money on upgrades completely change from team to team. So yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can upgrade your character here, and it's left all up to you to figure out during multiple playthroughs, which is fine since it's actually really fun to experiment with all this stuff and find the best combination. While Soldiers of Fortune certainly has a lot going for it, it's still got a few problems that can make the experience just a bit more annoying than it should be. First off, controlling your soldier has this weird, stiff feel to it that makes movement and lining up shots take more effort than it should. It almost feels like everything's sort of stuck to a grid instead of smoothly moving over the map like, say, something like Smash TV. Thankfully, you'll get used to it pretty quick, but it's never a game that just feels great to play. Some of the more deadly sins that the game commits, though, are a bit less forgivable. While it's established early on that keys open up new pathways to get around the levels, the game quickly just starts making up whatever rules it wants as to when and how you can get through the mazes. Sometimes a key does it. Sometimes killing enemies is the solution. Other times it's touching a random pickup on the ground, or even finding obscure environmental puzzles that the game has never even bothered using up to that point. Basically, unless you have every level memorized, then good luck on understanding what you have to do to progress at times. With the whole process of navigating a level quickly becoming a hunt for some random thing to touch, shoot, or walk into. The confusion is made all the more aggravating thanks to non-stop cheap enemy spawns and cheap hits that can mow your health down before you even notice, thanks to the game doing a terrible job at showing that your character's actually taking damage. There's no real flashing invincibility or getting knocked back when you take a hit here, so it's entirely possible to take several hits from something off screen all at once and then suddenly it's game over. While all of this can definitely make for a frustrating experience at times, it's still fun to start over with a new team to see if you can get just a bit further each time. Soldiers of Fortune was unfortunately overlooked when it came out here in the US, with magazines barely spending any time with it and tossing it out as that month's most average game. Honestly, I can't say I really gave it much of a chance either when I rented it way back then. At that time, the whole concept of leveling up a character with multiple stat categories that can have a huge impact on the game was pretty new outside of anything that wasn't an RPG. It especially didn't help that my rented copy didn't even come with instructions, and I had nothing to explain what any of this stuff did, so I was just tossing points into random junk just wanting to get to the next stage so that I could shoot more monsters. Of course, that strategy didn't get me very far, and the maze-like layout of the levels only made the confusion worse, so I ended up just tossing it back into the video store's return bin and never gave it another chance. At least until much later in life when I was armed with the power of the internet and was finally able to actually figure out how to play this damn game. Turns out Soldiers of Fortune is an amazing little shooter that was way ahead of its time. I just wish I had something to help me figure it out before I returned it, since I'm sure this would have been an all-time favorite of mine back then if I just had some damn instructions, and maybe just a little bit less of an ADD crippled brain. So don't make the same mistake that I did, and give Soldiers of Fortune a chance if you're looking for a fun, deep 16-bit shooter that you've probably never even heard of. It's not perfect by any means, but it's got an addictive quality to it that I love, and that by itself is reason enough to throw whatever money you have at these soldiers.